Now let's have a look at how we can capture ad hoc polymorphism. Uh, in Haskell, this is done using type classes. And uh, the way we capture uh, ad hoc polymorphism using type classes is that we modify our notion of parametric polymorphism. So far, types keep the form for all A, T. But now what we do is that we group types into type classes. And a type is now of the form for all types A in a type class gamma T. So an expression with this type has the type T, where A is instantiated by little t, for every type little t in the type classes in gamma. Here's an example. Consider the addition function. Uh, it has a type for all types A that are number types, A to A to A. And in Haskell we would write this as plus has type, if A is a number type, then the type is A to A to A. So we have bounded qualification, if we will, up here in ordinary parametric polymorphism, we would say for all A T here, now we say for all A in the type class T. That's the difference. I will now talk about how we extend the type system to deal with this. The extension is quite straightforward. We still need to use type environments to keep track of the types of free variables. Nothing new there. But we also need a type class environment, big C, that keeps track of the type classes for each type variable that we mention. So a type class environment, big C, uh, is a collection of bindings telling us that type variable A1 uh, stands for a type that's in type class gamma 1 up to type variable AK stands for uh, types that are in type class gamma K. And the gamma Ks are in fact not type classes, they're sets of type classes because uh, a type can belong to more than one type class and we need to capture that as well. We're also going to extend the language such that we can declare instances of type classes uh, and an instance declaration is of this form. It says, uh, if we have the assumptions about type variables in C prime, then T uh, is a type in the, the type classes in gamma. An example is this one. Uh, let's say that A is in the type class of numbers. A2 is a type in the type class of numbers then the composite type frac a1, a2 uh, is a type in the type class of number vectors. So in this way we can define instances of type classes and we call the collection of type class instances that we know ds. We can now define the rules for assigning type classes to variables and uh, the judgments that we consider can be of the form given uh, type class environment C, A has type class gamma, or they can be at the form given a type class environment C, A has the type classes mentioned in big gamma, so this is a set of type classes, and finally, given a type class environment C, we can conclude that uh, C prime is another type class environment. So let's look at the rules defining these judgments. The first one is the rule that says that A has type plus gamma. If we can look up the collection of type classes of A in the type class environment, and one of them is gamma, then A can certainly have type plus gamma. The next rule says that if we have declared that T has type plus gamma, so this was in DS, and the type class bindings in C prime are a consequence of those in C, then we can conclude from C that C has type class gamma. So we believe our declarations. Um, if we know that a type T has type class gamma 1, up to T has type class gamma n, then we know that T has all the type classes in, gamma, in the set gamma 1 up to gamma n. Nothing surprising there. And finally, if we know that T1 has type classes in the set gamma 1 up to Tn, having type classes in the set gamma n, 
then we can conclude that from C, we know the following type class environment, namely one in which T1 belongs to the type classes in gamma 1 up to Tn belonging to the type classes in gamma n. So this is how we assign uh, type classes to types and how we uh, assign sets of type classes to types. Now we can define uh, a new version of the type rules that uh, take this into account. Uh, type schemes are almost as in the hindley miller damas system except in one place, namely here. Because the universal quantifier says for all types A in the type class set, type class set gamma T. And we can now update our type system. We replace the rules for projection and let. We replace them by a general rule that lets us introduce and another rule that lets us eliminate universal quantifiers. First, a rule that eliminates universal quantifiers. It's similar to the projection rule in the sense that if we have an expression E and we want to type it and E has a polymorphic type for all A in gamma T, then um, if T is one of the types in gamma then E can have type T, where A is now instantiated by T. So this is instantiation. This is um, a generalized version of the PROJ rule uh, from the hindle milner damas system. The second interesting rule is the one that says when we can introduce universal quantifiers. We could do that in the old dead rule where we had the close operation. But here things are different. If um, we know that whenever we type... E and give it type T, and A has um, type classes in gamma, and if A is not mentioned as a free variable in here, then we can put a universal quantifier over uh, this here. So this is for all A, gamma, T, that E has as its type. So that's how we can introduce uh, universal quantification. And in the let rule, Things are simpler than they were in the hindle milner damas system because here, to type let x uh, equal e1 and e2, we type e1, gets type t. Now assuming that x has type t, we can then type check e2. And if e2 has type t, the type of the entire expression is t. So that's really all there is to it.